Hi, Wycliffe Barrett here. x Plane Dedicated, and I'm back from holiday, back from Florida, and the land of uh, milk and honey, as they say. This morning I'm going to do Cold and Dark Stars with the 737-200 Classic from Fly J. Sim. I'll see you on the other side of the trailer. Number 180, Bravo, Bravo, with it. Number 180, Bravo, Bravo, good afternoon to you. Report your altitude. Uh, 2,000 feet on 1014, Bravo, Bravo. Good Bravo, Bravo, understand you're for 60, so climb not above, initially not above 4,000 feet on the Q&H 1014. 4,000 feet, Bravo, Bravo. Correct, once you request the routing. Uh, let's go and then direct. Roger, right, when ready, clear direct to let's go. Let's go, let's go, Bravo, Bravo. So, the 737-200 from Fly J Sim, uh, whilst I was away on vacation, it had a massive update, and uh, within that update, there are numerous, numerous things. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description below to the release notes, because there are just too many to mention. There's been graphical updates in the cockpit, there's been graphical updates to the exterior, uh, there have been 
uh, new lighting arrangements, new systems have been implemented. The Exceva INS unit now fits into the aircraft, so that's a 3D unit. The uh, sound has been updated, so some of the switches and knobs, all sorts have been done. There's absolutely a massive update, and of course it's free to those who already own it. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to do a cold and dark start of the 737-200 Classic. Uh, it is one of the easiest aircraft to start, in actual fact. Um, I always thought it was quite complicated when I first started in flight simulation. Uh, but <clears throat> as the years have gone by, either I have become more competent, or in actual fact, it always was easy to start. Anyway, we'll see. Let's get on to the cold and dark start. See you in a moment. So here we are at Cardiff Airport in the 737-200 Classic. Um, just a quick whiz around the uh, cockpit. Very nice. Beautiful cockpit, beautifully drawn. And, uh, and as you can see with the view keys already uh, uh, programmed, you just get some really nice views here. Okay. So let's go to the overhead one of the best drawn overheads i think i've seen for a long time uh, any of you who've seen the vr insight overhead that you can purchase uh the unit the vr insight unit it's identical to this and this is identical to that in many ways so we're going to do the uh, cold and dark start in the 737 200 it's one of the easiest aircraft to start up although just now on the first run through uh, had a bit of a problem so Thought I'd re-record it, and uh, the first three things is you need to turn the battery on, close the cover, your damper, and galley power. Okay, so you've got those three things on. Now uh, we need to hold down the APU start switch. There we go, holding it down. You can hear the APU starting, and the uh, temperature rising just at the top left, uh, the uh, EKH temperature, exchange temperature, it's just rising. When it gets up to about 5 or 6, the APU light above will go out. Okay. So light's gone off. Can let go of that now. It's still rising. We get to about... Here, yeah, right, APU gem lights come on. I can, I can turn that off. That one off. Okay, so that's good. And the APU is running really nicely now. So, window heat on all four switches. Window heat. Pito static heat switches on. APU bleeds on. The PSI rises. Okay. At this point, it's, uh, all lights should go on, but I'll just put on the position lights, strobes, etc., collision lights. I won't put the uh, taxi and um, runway lights, runway turnoff lights on until I actually begin my taxi. Okay. Uh, the weather screen ab above the radar throttles. Let me get in there a little bit, which is just over here. We turn that to WX slash T. Turn up the brightness, I think. Just a little bit. Okay. Uh, cancel the uh, master caution light there and there. And then fuel pump on all four switches. Okay. So that is about it. At this point, I would be programming the INS, the SIVA INS. I have got an issue with that, which uh, I'll talk about at the end of the video, and we'll come back to that. So at this point, theoretically, rotate the uh, engine switches and turn on. We'll just put the emergency uh, lights on there. Okay. We're good to go, I think. So... Rotate the left to ground. Just wait for M1 to come up to about 20% and then feed in the fuel. And there we go. And we can hear M1, we see M1 coming back up. Here, EKH temperatures is 
set them. And you see the EPR moving up. So that's engine two started. Back up here. Same process. Wait until RPM comes around to around about 20 to 30 percent. And then sling up the fuel. <coughs> Excuse me. EK temperature comes up. We'll see the EPR slowly come up to around about 106, 107. And uh, that's a good engine start. Temperature will drop back down now to a more reasonable temp. And there you go. You can hear our aircraft. Uh, just let me adjust the lighting on this a little bit. There you go, that's better. Don't like those big blobby lights. <laughs> So there we are, cold and dark start in the 737-200 Classic Twin Jet. As I say, one of the easiest aircraft to start. I always used to think that it was very complicated, but uh, once you get the hang of it and you know the process, then uh, it's really quite straightforward. Let me just talk about the INS, uh, because I, th this is where I've got a real problem at the moment, and I can't figure it out. I I'm, I'm pretty sure that I will figure it out by the end of today because I've asked some questions. Hopefully, we'll get this sorted. But let me just show you, okay? So, uh, you open the INS, or it, 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 it used to be that you would open it up because you can have it as 2D if you want. Uh, I'll show you that. In fact, what I'll do is I'll show you the problem here. No, I won't. I'll show you the problem in 3D unit, okay? So, you open the INS and you rotate the big knob here to a line which is there okay straightforward enough uh, and then rather than waiting the uh, required amount of time which is ages click on the ready map button it turns green it's really hard to see it turn green but it has turned green believe it or not and then you click uh, you rotate the knob to nav okay and at this point i can load in a uh, 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 an FMS plan, so the FMS plans are kept in your explained directory. I've got a whole list of them. So you click on remote, yeah, and what it will do is load in the first plan of that list. Now, the first plan of my list is CYOW to CYYZ. Okay, well, I don't want to go there. I'm actually at Cardiff. I know I've got a flight plan in my list, Cardiff to Glasgow. Um, theoretically, at this point, in the manual, it says pressure arrow keys. Well, if I press those arrow keys, it's zoom. If I press those arrow keys, those are views. And if I press my other arrow keys, it's slide up and down. Um, it says you can use your scroll wheel. Nope can't use a scroll wheel uh, if I want to if I want to use that flight plan I press insert okay and I still can't use anything all right remote brings up the flight plan it's weird I can't figure it out I will do eventually and when I do we'll sort it out and uh, I'll do a, a, a vlog on that but it was a cold and dark start and we certainly started it it was certainly cold, and the aircraft was dark. Hope you enjoyed that. It's a short vlog, but it's the first one back after my holidays. I'll see you all soon. You take care. This is Wycliffe Barrett, X-Plane Dedicated. Bye-bye. November 1, Bravo, 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 good afternoon to you. Report your altitude. Uh, 2,000 feet on 1014, Bravo, Bravo. Bravo, 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 so climb not above, initially not above 4,000 feet on the Q&H 1014. 4,000 feet, Bravo, Bravo. Correct, once you request the routing. Uh, let's go and then direct. Roger, when ready.